Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is my wonderful period two honors bio class. Say hi. Hi. And we are discussing chapter 33, population growth and regulation. And I am going to tell you again, this looks like ginormous. If you looked at the PDF, it's huge. And that's because I like a lot of images and things to learn and not walls of words. So you will see a lot of pictures in this presentation. Now, we already did a lab, right? What was our lab that we just did? Ursus, right? And what did you have to forage for? Food. food, okay? Now, I put enough food out there to support 18 bears, okay? Did you all survive? No. no. Some of you died for different reasons. Were all of you healthy? No. no, okay? And so you were competing for resources. And in this unit, that was an introduction to ecology um, could I have whoever sitting in, before you start madly typing, listen, whoever sitting in the blue seat, give the definition of ecology to your slated friend. Go ahead, blue tell slate. Okay, then once you've said it, go ahead and type it up in your notes. And we're learning how to take group shared notes, so you're going to be awesome, but there may be some delays today as they're learning. Okay, I, so will I always tell you what needs to be in the notes? Yes. Could you add in extras? Yes. Who's going to make sure that all the highlighted parts are filled in that I've highlighted in your notes? Which note taker? Alpha. See, scroll through the notes. Do you see where there's some yellow highlights? Do you see that? Wherever it's highlighted, that means I'm going to contribute notes to you there. Do you see that? Where it's like blank and everything? So I'll give you those notes at that point. Beta can add in extra, flavor flaves making bold, or unhighlighting things that I've already highlighted, and um, Flip a Pick is throwing in a picture to represent that. Okay, now. Here's one thing I want to teach you just right, just two terms. They're gonna come up later in this presentation, but I wanna get it in your head right now. And the first word is habitat. Habitat is where an organism lives. In this particular habitat, there are many different species in this organism. They're all living in the same habitat, woodland area. Um, but a niche is their job, it's what they do. So for instance, what kind of organism is this right here? Wolf. Wolf, okay. What's another living organism that's in this picture? Yes. Trees, good. Do they have different jobs? Yes. yes. What's the job of the tree? Tell me. Provide oxygen, <clears throat> Provide oxygen and? Shelter. Sugars, shelter, right? And then the wolf has a different job. He's probably a what? Starts with a C. Predator, that's a good word, or carnivore, exactly. But they're all living in this one single habitat, but a niche is their different job. Okay, now you're learning group shared notes because this is the first lecture we've ever had. Did I tell you this would come up later? Yes, so whenever I tell you that, you don't have to make sure you get it down. Do I have it in your notes right now? No, I'm just preparing it for you in your brain so when I use those words, you'll understand it. Also, look at me right now. When I'm explaining things, wait, when I'm explaining things, you want to have your eyes to me because I'm making sure you understand it. I promise you I will not move too fast that you can't get all the notes down, okay? Because what you don't want to do is get so caught up in the words that I'm saying that you're not here for the explanation. Because what I'm trying to do is build a foundation in your brain. I'm very strategic about it. My words are very purposeful and I'm trying to get it so it makes sense to you, so it's not about memorization, it's just like logical to you. That's where I like you to be in this class. It'll always be a discussion. I will ask you things, I'm expecting you to respond. You don't have to raise your hands, it's like give and take, okay? It's you're more likely to learn it that way, okay? Um, now, we didn't even write down the terms habitat and the term niche isn't even up there yet, but I just explained it. Turn towards your bio buddy who's ever wearing the darkest shirt. Could you please differentiate between habitat and niche based on just what I said? Go ahead.
Okay. Now, come back to me. This next part, you are going to see all the levels. I want you to hold off because it'll be better for your brain to type it up as a review than to type while I'm talking, okay? So this one tells you level of organization when you're looking at life. Now it's starting down here. Do you know what this is right here? It is an individual. It, to me, I believe it is a caribou, okay? Um, or it might be an elk. elk. Yeah, I think it's an elk, okay? So right here, this is one individual. But if I put several of them together, what will they be? Population. So they're all one species. So right here in this room, we are a population of humans. There's probably a population of spiders in here. There are populations of bacteria all over your body. There's more bacteria all over your body right now than there are people in the world. <laughs> okay? But if I take this population, look what I've highlighted here for population. What's the next level up, if I'm gonna level up in this game? Community. How do you think a community is different from a population? Okay, go ahead. It's different uh, populations interacting with one another. Yes, were you gonna say that too? Well, I was gonna say that the community has like uh, more like different animals. So like different animals or different plants or different fungi or different bacteria because a community is like all the populations in that one area. That's a community. So if we looked at this room, we have people, we have, or this Oak Park High School, we have bunnies, we have plants, right? That's our community. Take it up another level. When you talk about ecosystem, what word do you hear in ecosystem? Something we're studying this unit. Ecology, Ecology right? Okay. So now we're going to take into consideration the environment at this point. So it might be the temperature of the room, the temperature of the water, the pH of the water, how, how often the wind blows, how light, how dark it is. Those things, temperature, pH, light, dark, salinity, are those living things? Are those biotic things? No, those are what we call abiotic things. Non living things are abiotic. The water that you're drinking is abiotic. Unless you've got it out of a creek and it has some giardia or something in it, it's abiotic. This class, what's the name of this class? Biology, okay? Ology means the study of, when we say biology, we're studying life, okay? So an ecosystem looks at all the organisms in that community all the living things, and it takes in the abiotic conditions, how much rain, precipitation, temperature. When you look at a specific ecosystem in a one general location, that's called a biome. Now, I know you're already familiar with biome. I would like the light-shirted bio buddy to talk about the tropical jungle biome. What do you think you would find in there? Flora and fauna. Flora means like plants, flora like flower, fauna means animals. And then I would like the dark-shirted bio buddy to talk about the desert bio. How would that be different? What would you find there? Go ahead, have that discussion. to me, we're, you would start at the individual or the organism, and then you go population, all the same species, right? Community would be more than one species, right, in a community. Ecosystem, we're taking into con, um, consideration what? Abiotic weather, rain. Level up again, a biome is this particular area. I don't even put this on my list. I'm just pointing it out to you right now. But we take it up to the top right here is the biosphere. The biosphere. And the biosphere is where all life exists, is in the biosphere. 
Now you know other spheres out there. What are some other spheres out there you know about? Say it. Stratosphere. Give me another one. Atmosphere. What do you think hydrosphere is? Hydro means water. Lithosphere is land. So when we refer to biosphere, we're just saying that area where all life can be found. Okay, so now take a moment, starting at, I think I started you off at individual or organism, work your way up through the levels, try to recall how are they different, if you want to put little mini definitions in the parentheses, you can, and your flip a pick is going to find a picture, you know, and it would be organization of life, kind of, kind of a thing if you're kind of searching it. And it actually goes, which you will learn, atom, molecule, organelle, cell, tissue, organ, organ system, organism, population, community, ecosystem, biosphere. But we'll learn about that in a little bit. Okay, so fix your notes. You still have the same exact picture before you started talking. Yeah, you will. Oftentimes you will find the exact picture I use in my presentation. Now, um, did you get your notes done? Are you feeling good? Are you feeling like a team? Working it out? Yeah. Do you like it? Yes. Yeah. Don't you feel like more confident that you have everything you need to study when everybody's contributing? I, I think it is too, and it kind of takes the pressure off. Yeah. All right, so um, this slide right here is just kind of showing you what the ecosphere is, and it consists of several different things like air, water, land. All of that is where all life exists, and that is your biosphere. Okay, now, you got your notes tied? Because I want you to look at me for a minute. Um, during class, so you're not going to type for a minute, you're just going to look at me. Okay, don't ask me to invite you to your learning, just look at me when I ask. During class, I like to stop intermittently and check to make sure you understand it. I'm sure you've all been in a class where somebody goes, the teacher goes, okay, do you get it? And you don't see anybody saying, oh, I totally don't know how to, can you give me another one of those? You know, you don't want to say anything, you know, or everybody goes like, yeah, but I really don't have any data, quantitative data to know whether you understand it. I'm just asking the words, do you all understand it? You're like, I just want this class to be the hell over. Sure, yeah, I got it, go. Okay, I get that. So I will ask you questions. They will be embedded into my presentation and they serve two purposes, okay? Well, actually three. One, it's just a little more fun for you. Okay, it's just a fun factor, okay? Two, you will know whether you know it or not. And you will know safely, because when I'm doing it as formative assessment, um, summative is like if it's a test or a quiz and I'm gonna record it somewhere. This I'm not recording, okay? You will know whether you know it or not anonymously. I won't call you out and go, hey, dumbass. Oh, sorry, I would never say that. Um, <laughs> um, dumb donkey, you know. <laughs> How do you not know that? You know, I'm not, I might mock you. Actually, I might mock you occasionally, but I won't know who you are. I'll try not to look at your name, okay? Anyway, I'm really digressed on that. Down the rabbit hole. Um, but anyway, you'll know whether you know something or not. It'll give you practice safely before a quiz or a test. Also, it gives feedback to me. Because if most of you are missing it, I know the reason you're missing it is my fault. And I need to go back and reteach that. When I ask you questions that have right and wrong answers, I can just focus my time and energy on correcting why that one is wrong, or you can help your bio buddy understand why it's wrong. And I don't care if you talk to your bio buddy, I don't want you to like be so loud when you're talking like, the answer's A, and everybody's like, okay, it's so A. Because I want everybody to have the opportunity to do what? I want you to process and think. Sometimes the questions, a lot of times the questions won't even be thinking questions. It's kind of like if I say, is this right here? Choose the stapler, okay? This is not a thinking application level question, okay? Because this is the stapler. But if I said, how are both of these items, the tape and the stapler, and the, okay, let me try it again. The tape and the stapler. How are both of these items similar? Now you're thinking, right? Tell me. They're both black. They're both black. So you went with just their uh, their color. How? What's another way they're both the same? Tell me how. Um, they put stuff together. 
they put stuff together. Do you see how you're thinking now and applying things? And then I could say, what are different ways you could use them? When couldn't you use them at the same time? You see what I'm saying? That's a thinking level question. That's a processing question. A lot of times the questions are gonna be in here, which one's a stapler, A, you know? But, so, but it'll still make sure that you know those. Did I see your hand up for a second? No. Uh, I was gonna say they're both plastic. They're both plastic, see? He's making very good observations, like a scientist. So the way we're gonna do that, and some of you have already experienced this before, is called Class Lab. And for the entire year, um, don't log in yet, because I gotta get rid of uh, zero period. Some of the students, yes. For the entire year, this will be our Class Lab number. Even if you're home sick, you could log into classlab.com and still answer all the questions. You see what I'm saying? As we're going along, or as you're looking at the notes, when you go to classlab.com, this is one continuous number. The only reason that there's a break right here is to allow for chunking in your brain. So you can go 9233 and then 5466. You can leave your notes, your notes, and if you want to use your phone to go to Class Lab, you can. I don't care. If you grab an iPad and you want to just do class lab on the iPad and notes on your Chromebook, you can. Whatever you like, I'm good with. Okay? So you can pick any number you want and let, don't go Charlottesville on me. Nothing racist, nothing mean. Okay? Yes? Um, could you post the, uh, the class ID on the screen? So if you're at home and you don't Oh, I, you know what, the only thing that creeps me out is that I have people from like all over the place who get on Instagram, so maybe yeah. write it in your notes right now, on your group shared notes. Can you put it in classroom? Oh. What? Can you put it in our classroom? Yeah, but you'll be surprised. You will just memorize it. <laughs> I promise you. Memorize. Yeah. But I will put it in Google Classroom. Okay. What's the put our actual name? You can, uh, now if we're taking a quiz, this is how you'll take quizzes, okay? Then you'll put in last name, first name, you know, and I don't want you to go on any other tab and stuff like that. But when we're doing this, you can put anything you want. You can be your all, you know, I'm bunny, you know. Whatever it is that you want to be, you can be here. As long as, like I said, it's not racist, mean. I just think back to my anatomy and physiology class and there was a girl in my, when I was in high school, I didn't really like her very much, so I named my cat that we were dissecting. I named it after her. I know, is that not epically mean? And I always go back to that and think about that and I have still guilt to this day. And high school was a long time ago and I just think, I am so mean. And girls are way worse than that. Girls can smile at you and say like, oh, I really like your hair, but then they're walking away. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> girls are mean. Guys, when they're mad, they're like, dude, you're such a mean And then it's like, okay, we're best friends again. Not girls, it's a long time. And I just say to that, don't be mean. I keep thinking, I, I still remember my dead cat that we dissected and I called her that. Oh, I feel so bad. Guilt, guilt. Oh yeah, girls can remember everything. Yeah, I'm more scared of a, of a girl being pissed off at me than a guy. You should, because a guy will just confront yeah, you. A guy will, a guy yeah, guys will just be like, not girls, no, we'll hold that in and you'll go, and then and, they'll like murder you at some point. Yes, now, and, and when you're dating somebody, and if you're dating a girl, and you go, hey, like, are you mad? And I'm she's fine. like, fine. And you're like, no, you know no. that's not true, right? <laughs> yeah, if you get the answer, fine, or like, oh, what do you mean? Like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Then you'll know. She goes, oh, I didn't know. But if she goes, no, I'm fine. She's not. Then there's something wrong. Yeah, yes, there's something wrong. You better figure that rule. out. Okay, here you go.
you're hundred percent. Tell me. Sorry. And I'm sure I'm distracted. Oh shoot! I thought we got hundred percent. Okay. So which term refers to a group that consists of only one type of species, and almost all of you said population. Now, how many people didn't get that right? Two. Now I'm not gonna, oh you didn't raise your hand baby. <laughs> She's like, it's me. <laughs> okay. No, see, I'm not looking. I'm not gonna go look. I can look, but I'm not looking, okay? So now, you're, see, she's like, I know I'll get it right next time. Could you, could I have whoever's in the blue seat explain why E would be a better answer than D? Why would E be a better answer than D? <laughs> What's one word that would send you to population over organism? Group. Yep, the word group. It's not a single one. Now, little tip from me to you. This practice question will show up again when I'm doing a review for the unit, but you know what would be a really cool thing to do right now? What could you do to capture your question and your answer? You could, or screenshot. You know how to take screenshots. Put it in your notes, right? Do you remember how to do screenshots? It's a little stuttery thing above the six. If you do um, control shift, study, stuttery screen above the six, you can capture exactly what you want. Pop it in your notes. I always think that song, take, 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 rub it on your body. What's that song? Where did I have it? Fitness Marshall does it. You're suspicious. Why? How what goes? Oh, how suspicious. Is there something about that that I don't know? Oh, he go, oh no, not cake, cake, cake. He's saying cake, cake, cake. Eat your cake. You've never heard that song? Oh, I'll have to find it. No, not cake. Oh. You, uh, it would be in your downloads possibly. How did you get your picture once you screenshotted it on your Chromebook? Right away, it took Yeah, just take another one, it'll show up in the bottom right hand corner, and then copy paste. All right, let's look at your next question. Which term refers to all of the species in one area and the environment? Most of you got that. 24 of you got it, seven of you struggled. Uh, two of you picked biosphere. A better definition of biosphere is where all life exists. This is asking you, you have all the species, so that would get you to the community level, right? Because it has all the species in that one local area and its environment. Okay, so that's where you're going to pick ecosystem. Why um, could youngest bio buddy explain why is community not a good answer for this one? Why is community not, youngest, tell your oldest bio buddy. What does the community include? The abiotic factor. You see that? Now, I don't know if you're appreciating or not, you just may be really tired and I get that, but hear me. Do you see how when I'm giving you these discussions, I'm saying why you don't pick this and why you pick this, okay? So that should help you. So if I ask a question, maybe this time it's on ecosystem, but maybe next time it'll be community, you'll already have thought through in your brain, what's a better answer for this? What's a better answer for this? All of that, you could easily tune out when you're in here, right? You could easily go, I'm just not listening to that discussion, what are the notes, okay? But if you take advantage, if you are bell to bell with me, do I give you a lot of homework? No. What kind of class is this? Yes, but what's your designation in this class? Honors. Okay? It is an honors bio class. If you stay engaged with me the whole time and do these thinking questions that I ask you, that is going to help your brain understand it. So it's not about memorization, it's about understanding. And if you understand it, then there's fewer facts that you have to keep going back to and looking at, okay? All right, now, moving on. Um, we're gonna start looking at different populations, and in order to understand them, we talk about something called rate of increase. Okay, so we're, we're gonna start looking at populations. Later, we're gonna then add in communities, 
and we're working our way up to the biosphere in this unit, that, okay? So the first thing we want to do is the rate of increase. This is an equation. It's birth rate minus death rate over total population, and that is referred to as R. Okay, so R is equal to the birth rate minus the death rate over the total population size, which is often referred to as N. I would write out for the equation birth rate minus death rate over the total population. And that will give you your intrinsic rate of increase. Now, I got to tell you something conceptual, so then I need your eyes up here so you get this. There's two ways you might get B and D. One is capital, one is lowercase. Doesn't matter, I'm going to explain something to you right now. If I say there's 15 births and 10 deaths, then you could say B minus D is what? Five. Five. And then you need to know the population size. So let's say I say the population size is 32. Then you would take. B minus D, right, which we figured out was 5, and you'd put it over 32, and that would give you R, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody tells you the birth rate is 0.22 and the death rate is 0.15, what they're giving to you then is the birth rate and death rate per capita. It's giving it to you how many births per 1,000 individuals, okay? How many deaths? per 1,000 individuals, okay? And then your rate of increase, you don't have to divide it by the population, you would just say 0.22 minus what? 0.15 or whatever numbers I give you. And then that would be the, the um, intrinsic rate of increase per 1,000 individuals. So I just wanna point that out to you. Sometimes you actually get the actual numbers and the actual population size, but sometimes they will have already calculated it for you. Okay, so that is equal to R. So let's try doing one of those right now. You're already logged into Class Lab for right now, so it should just pop back up on your screen, did it? No. Oh, it will now, watch. Did it pop back up on your screen? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Anybody needs a calculator, they're in the very back of my room. You can see them in a box. Yeah, computer has a calculator. Now, make your bio buddy do it themselves. Do not give them the answer till they've tried to get it. Because everybody needs to think for themselves. Yes, always. You never. You can always have your phone up. I don't. They don't bother me. Not as a fraction, ever, ever, ever. Wait, I put it as percent. Okay, I'm telling you, you can still get it right. I, I just don't think I'd put in the answer as a percent, but you'll know you got it right. Okay, 88% of you are done. Let's go. I can see right here, Schmerman is on his phone, and that's fine. At one point, you want. Yeah. See how it has phone? Sam, next to Sam it has phone. Are you on your phone? Yeah. It, which is perfectly fine. But I'm waiting for a few of you to can finish. Maybe some of you started on your phone. Oh, okay. Whoops, I stopped it. All right. So almost everybody got it. I can tell how popular the answer is by the size of how it appears on the screen right now. 
So I can see that this was the most common answer. Is this one right? Yeah, is yeah. this one right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, I just didn't put that in as all the possible options. Is this one right? Yeah. No. Okay, because you wouldn't give it to me as a fraction. That's not a rate of increase. So somebody put 10. Okay, so I'm having a hard time even figuring out where they got that number. Okay, I could see 11, but that would just tell me we had 18 births, we had seven deaths. The difference between that is what? 11. They were even struggling with the math on that. But that still doesn't tell me the rate of increase because I would need to take those 11 individuals and divide it by my population size, which is 50. Okay, let's try one more. I'm just going to make up one off the top of my head. Okay, in a population of bunnies, we had, um, let's say we had, um, seven births, seven births, and we had 15 deaths. And this was a population of 40 bunnies. Work, I know, just work it out. Seven, what did I say? Seven births and 15 deaths. So yeah, the, the births were seven, the deaths were 15, and our population size is equal to, what did I say? 40. 40. 40, okay, work it out. Work it out. Are you putting some symbol in front of your answer? Yes. What's the symbol you're putting in front of your answer? Negative. Negative. So they had a decrease, right? Their intrinsic rate went down. So their birth, they would say, you would say seven. Tell me how to do this. Seven minus fifteen. Seven minus fifteen over. 40. Mm -hmm. And 7 minus 15 is what? Negative 8. Negative 8 over 40 is what? 0.2? Negative. Negative. Good. Okay, ask your bio buddy, do you understand how to do that? Could you do that on a quiz or a test? All right. Clarifying questions you want to ask me? All right. Anything? Okay, so now let's, now let's move on from that and let's talk about an organism's biotic potential. This is basically maximum R, a maximum rate of increase, okay? And it varies per organism. Um, and for instance, can you see right here, can you see the mama and she has a baby on her back? What would prevent her from having three babies? can't carry three babies when she's jumping from tree to tree, right? Now, how many babies do we tend to have? I'm not saying in your lifetime, in, in a birthing event, one. Yeah, usually one. Rarely do people have twins, right? It's not a common, it's not like, oh yeah, she had twins, everybody has twins, right? We don't often have twins, right? And remember, the vagina is not a clown car. You don't try to get as many things in there. So when you're optimum and you're having eight babies, right? Little tip, how many nipples do we have? Two, okay? We don't have eight nipples lined up here. Put a baby, put a baby, okay? There's a reason why you only give birth usually to one child at a time. If you are getting assistance, which is perfectly fine, right? You need assistance in pregnancy. Maybe you have in vitro fertilization. You know, you're a product of in vitro fertilization. That's where a lot of twins come from now. I have more twins now in the last, what, how many years? 29 years than I've ever had. And that's because of in vitro fertilization. So two babies are born at the same time. Now you can be maternal twins or fraternal twins. Maternal twins means you have a single egg fertilized by a single sperm and early on in development, it's divided into two. They're gonna have the same DNA, right? Those are the ones that look what? Identical. Though due to conditions of the womb, there could be slight differences, right? Okay, now, um, fraternal twins is two different eggs fertilized by two different sperm. So what you might do is you might have a parent who takes hormones to help them to hyperovulate. Those <coughs> eggs are removed. They're fertilized with your father's sperm or a donor sperm of some sort, or it could be a donor egg. And then those are implanted in the uterus. Now when Optimum had hers, she had all eight of them implanted or even more implanted. But like I said, the vagina and the uterus is not a clown car. We're not built to have that many babies. Do you think they were smished? 
Yes, do you think they're gonna have problems? Yes, so you don't put eight of them up in there, right? Okay, just logically speaking. Because we can't, that's not our biotic potential. That's not natural for us to develop. So you need to look, what kind of things affect biotic potential? Those aren't dead babies. Those are dolls. I just piled them up, okay? So the first thing, you're like, okay, that makes it better than food. Um, the first thing is the age of first reproduction. When, how soon after you are born do you start having babies? Most of you, I would guess, would have to wait at least till you're 12 or 13 years of age, right? I am fairly confident that every one of you in your room could either knock someone up or be knocked up by winter break. Okay? Good choice, bad choice. I put that in the bad choice column. Okay? Why? Because most of you can't support yourselves right now. Emotionally, it would be hard on you and your young brain. You never had to have that kind of responsibility. Okay? We um, really think school and education is important. So your parents are investing in you. I would get out of high school at least first, maybe even graduate from college. Make sure I'm in a partnership with somebody that I know who can help me raise this child so I'm not doing it by myself before I got knocked out. Does that make sense? Okay, good strategy. If you don't know that, learn that now, okay? We wait till we have a good conditions to raise that child. But you could be a mouse and be weeks old and be like, game on, okay? <laughs> so everything's different. A butterfly could be, like a female one could be hatching. Her wings are not even full yet so that she can fly away. She is captive to where she is. A male one will be like, yeah, tough that, okay? <laughs> and she's like, okay. You know, she doesn't even have an option there, okay? So when you start, it's very different. Age of first reproduction. Number two, average number of offspring, okay, per reproductive event. Like for us, we usually have how many per reproductive event? One, yeah, one per event. Okay, how often each individual reproduces? You can, when you get older, you can practice all you want, but you're gonna have different times where maybe you're trying to get pregnant, right? And just a little tip, well, I don't know. If the penis goes into the vagina, there's a chance of pregnancy, okay? So just keep that in mind, because for some reason, we're in biology, but yet some students are still forgetting that little, that little aspect of it, okay? So think that through before you decide to uh, go down that pathway, okay? So how often each individual reproduces? And then last, the chance of survival until the age of reproduction. Here in our first world country, we have a really high rate of survival if you're born. Is that different in, in third world countries? Yes. Okay. Now, let's compare us to like plants. Plants make thousands and thousands and thousands of seeds, right? Do all the seeds find fertile soil? No, some fall among the rocks. Some fall among the thorns. Some of you know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> okay, so not every seed finds a place where it can develop. Right? So they have a high rate of death and mortality early on. Okay, everybody got those notes? Okay, let's ask a question.
Okay, some of you are almost done. Let's go. Help your neighbor if they need help. Say, neighbor, can I assist you? All right, I'm stopping because I'm done. Oh, we almost got 100. Okay. So it says, if R is equal to a negative number, what must be happening? Almost all of you got A. C is the, the bird rate. And the death rate, that's interesting. It's wrong for many reasons, <laughs> okay? Um, could oldest bio buddy explain why the bird rate and the death rate are equal, why that would not be a negative number? Go ahead. Okay, now go to the second reason besides birds. <laughs> All right, next question. And which of the following statements about a plant species is not relevant, not relevant for determining the biotic potential? Let's go through, before we look at the not one, let's address these and see which of the, on the um, dolls page, the pack, stacks of dolls, and see which one of those statements it fits. It produced its first flowers at five years of age. What, what one is that referencing? Tell me. The age of reproduction. First age of reproduction. It reproduces annually. How often? Good. 50% of the seedlings grow into mature plants. Chance of survival. Good. On average, 100 seedlings are produced by each plant every year. How many? And then A was it produces 10 kilograms of mass per year. Does that tell me anything about its biotic potential? No. No, it's telling me how much stuff it's making, but that's not its biotic potential. Check with your bio buddy, especially if they needed the shame, shame. If they needed that, help them to understand now. Say, do you get it now? And make sure, are you good so far in everything we've done? Go ahead, ask that question. Yeah. So far. Is it good so far? All right, now we're going to keep going up in our ability, what we can do with this. We know about biotic potential, okay, we know about rate of increase, biotic potential. Let's look at two different models, because species fall somewhere between these two. These are like the two extremes, and they fall somewhere in there, okay? One, uh, mo one model that some organisms fall underneath is called uh, exponential growth, exponential growth. And they're like, let's eat and drink because tomorrow we may die. They're like, we got all this food here, let's have sex, let's have babies, we don't know how long this is gonna last, let's go for it, okay? Exponential growth. Do you think those organisms tend to be big or small? Small, okay? Logistic growth, <laughs> logic, okay? They will take off and then they usually reach some sort of like leveling off point. So I always think logistic growth. They're planners, they're thinking. I have three bedrooms in my house. One for mom and dad and one for each what? Child, okay? So they're logistic, they're reaching a caring capacity. Now I have relatives that have two relatives, in fact, who have, like, cannot stop having children. I swear to you, okay? It's like they're filling the earth. And, and, and you might ascribe that philosophy and more power to you, okay? Do uh, you know how many children I had? I had two, had two boys, okay? Do you know why I stopped after two boys? I, I, I was, you know, I love these two boys, okay? I wouldn't have been opposed, but do you know why I stopped after two boys? Too much. Two, two different ones, emotionally, okay, because I, I needed to work to support the lifestyle that I lead, I have chosen to work, okay? So um, in order for me to work, I would have to take off time to care for them when they're young, there's different things like that. So financially, it would be a hardship for me. I mean, just not a road I wanted to go down. I still want to shop, shop at Nordy's, you know? There are things I <laughs> choose to do, okay? But more importantly than money, because I'm sure we could have swung it or figured it out, was emotional. I felt like I could invest in two children. If I had three, four, or five, six, seven children, sometimes you have children helping to raise other children, which I'm not opposed to, and that may be your lifestyle choice and more power to you. That's just not a road I want, didn't want to go down. I didn't want to have to take a van to go to a restaurant, okay? 
Um, I, I didn't want to have to worry about that. I just wanted to take a car, okay, and have that be enough. So those are choices I met. I reached my maximum carrying capacity. A couple of my relatives haven't reached that yet. Okay, and they will continue to proliferate. Okay, so there's exponential versus logistic. Organisms fall usually into one of these two patterns. Exponential is called the J-shaped growth curve because it looks like a J. Logistic is the red one, it looks like an X. So take a look right here. This is a mayfly. Whoever's sitting in the blue seat, could you explain what do you know about this mayfly? Look what this is called. I'm gonna give you a couple terms up here to use in your explanation. Okay, so go ahead and just start, blue seated one. Go ahead. What did I put next to the words J-shaped? Insects. Insects. Good. If it's exponential growth, there are no limitations. No limitations. Now, there are two phases here. What are the two phases? Lag, Lag and exponential. Good. Um, that's going to become important in a minute. So just remember that. It's lag and then exponential. And then it will eventually hmm, crash. Crash and burn, yeah. Okay, now slated one. Take this information that you learned here and see how is it similar to the logistic growth curve and how is it different. Make an analysis. I have a logistic growth curve on here still. I'm sorry, an exponential growth curve on here still. It's the blue one. Okay, they've just explained. Slate, you explain. How is it similar? How is it different? The logistic it's growth still, curve. There's still a bit of a problem. Then there's the Okay, what do they have in common? Tell me. Yeah, they have both have lag and they both have a time of exponential growth, right? But in the logistic growth curve, it starts to slow down. And it slows down as it reaches its what? Carrying, carrying capacity. capacity. Now this carrying capacity could be like a line right here, okay? Sometimes it's a little above, sometimes it's a little below. What does this remind you of? Oh, you haven't learned this yet. This should remind you of homeostasis. Um, yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. Like homeostasis. Think of this as like ecosystem homeostasis. You know, sometimes your temperature is a little hot, sometimes your temperature is a little cold. You're always adjusting your temperature. What's something I could do if my temperature is too hot? Besides take off clothes and those kind of behaviors, what could you do? What does your body naturally do? Tell me. Sweat. What do you do? What does your body naturally do when you're cold? Shiver. Shiver. It's trying to keep you at your core body temperature, right? So it will do things like that. Ecosystems do that too. You could have a whole bunch of eagles get born but there's only so many nesting sites in that area. So some of the eagles are gonna live and some of them are gonna die. And it might drop it down below the carrying capacity and then it might come back up. Weather, seasons, abiotic things can affect how they go. But your carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals of a species that can be supported by the environment. that can be supported by the environment. Did you get it? Now, blue person, back to you. Notice there's some environmental resistance that starts to slow down their exponential growth. Blue, explain how this is a good example of environmental 
um, resistance that could slow the growth down. Go ahead. He's just going to get himself a child to eat and then go on back. <laughs> they have to watch out for that in some of those Alaskan villages, like polar bear. Be careful when you walk to school. All right. Now, one last thing I want to get in your head, and then we're going to do our little blogging. Okay, I want to talk to you about survivorship curves. Okay. So the first thing on your survivorship curves is to know what a cohort is. It's all the members of a population born at the same time. If all of you in 10th grade, you're in a cohort. You're all going to be applying for what at the same time? Wow. College. Are you going to be competing with each other? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If there was some pathogen that went around and wiped out okay, half of the 10th graders in all of the United States, would that increase the odds that you would go to Stanford? Yes. Yes, yes because there would be less what? Competition. Competition. Okay, I'm just saying. That's a cohort. Okay. Now, survivorship is the probability of a newborn in that individual's living and surviving to particular ages. This bird fell out of the nest. He is going, he, what did he do? He died, okay? So when you look at different organisms, you look, what are the odds that you're gonna survive, okay? There are three survivorship curves. Organisms fall somewhere on this curve. Okay? So type one is like us. Okay, be real self-centered and like we're number one, we're number one. That's a type one curve. Notice it starts with how many individuals? Can you read this? Look up here. How many individuals? A thousand. Eyes up here, eyes up here, because I'm explaining a concept. Starts with a thousand individuals, and in type one, most of you survive until you get old and you start dying at the end of your lifetime, whatever your lifetime is, okay, the average human lifetime. The opposite of a type 1 curve is a what? Type 3, type three like plants, because not all of them make it to some good soil. So a type 3 of a thousand bo are born, okay, it's a much, you know, not a lot of them survive. Those that do survive live out their lifetime. Somewhere in between those two is a type two, like a bird. That bird could die because somebody ate it, or that bird could die because it flew into a window. It's not really a factor of its age. Just you know, random things are going to kill it off. So those are your three types of growth curves. So if you look here, here's an elephant. They are a large mammal. If they live and they're born, most of them survive, and they're going to die off at the end of their age, type one. Type two, bird, intermittently die, not really a factor of their age, but as they get older, more and more are gonna die, right? Okay, and then type three, like this mosquito, not all of them make it, and a lot of them die off early on. Those are the three types of survivorship curves. Okay, and so that's here all on one graph. So on your notes for survivorship curve, on type one, most individuals live out their lifespan and die of old age, large mammals and humans. Type two, individuals die at a constant rate across their lifespan, birds, rodents. Oh, did you get the cohort one? You know what that one is? All members of a population born at the same time. Same time. Good. And then number one underneath that was type one was large mammals and humans. Number two, birds and rodents. Type three, most individuals die early in life. Fish, invertebra invertebrates, plants.
got a question. It should have popped up on your screen, yeah? If you haven't answered your question, do it right now. Okay, and I am done with you. Yay, those of you who answered got 100%. Um, could I have the light shirted bio buddy explain why they chose C? And you were right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, whatever their lifespan is, how many of them are living out their lifespan? Most of them in, in type 3, most of the options are dying. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so it's not like a, X is not the same for All right. Now, this is part of the closure part. I want you to scroll back through your group shared notes. And this is an individual activity right now. Just scroll back in your group shared notes that you've got going here. Did you nest them in a place where you know where you can find them? Did you nest them underneath unit one, group shared notes? Look at some of the things you learned today. In your mind, you're gonna say, hey, these are what this is what I learned today. Like, you know, two or three sentences, what you would tell. Like this would be at the dinner table and your mom or your dad or your grandma says, What you learn in school today? This is your answer to that, okay? Thinking back. When you have an idea in your mind what you would say to grandma when she asks that question, what are the big ticket items? Big ticket, not details. Just give grandma big ticket items. When you have that, give a double tap to your neighbor's desk. And then when they're done, they'll let you know. Okay, if you have both double tapped, I want you to share. What are some things that you learned today? Big ticket items, what did you learn? Okay, then I want you to start closing down your notes and go in Google Classroom. Google Classroom. Just the way I like to say it. Are you in Google Classroom? Scroll through Google Classroom until you get to um, where it talks about a blog paper. Wait. Not this, wait. It's the first thing. Or no, Google Classroom. Oh, because you are. I'm on Google Sites, but you're going to go on. Okay, are you in Google Classroom? Find your blog paper. Okay? When you open up that document, change it to your name. I know at the top it already did it because you opened it up, but do you see the very first title on the document? It says Litton. Put your name in. You see that? See, now look at me one more time so I can be brief about it. Just look at me and stop typing. I'm glad you want to type, but just listen for one second, okay? Number one, you want to think through, have you started building your Google site yet? Okay, so you want to start building your Google site. What would be a helpful thing to help you build your Google site? The video. The video, where did I post the video? On your My homepage. You'll see it right there. It's like tech, it's like tech teacher or something. I posted it right there. It's like 13 minutes long. It'll tell you how to do a Google site. Remember your Google site, stop typing, needs to be your homepage. You have a homepage about you. Whatever you want to put on there, I don't care. And you have a sub page like I have here about your blog. 
make your blog page however you want to make it. Here's mine because it's about reflections. I took a picture where it's reflecting, right? Okay, you're going to be inserting onto that page. You can insert from your Google Drive. I inserted my blog page. Keep in mind, anybody in the world can see this. This is an archive. You're um, documenting what you've learned or processing in that day. It gives you a second to close your brain down from this topic so you're ready to move on to your fourth period class and all that you need to do in your endeavors there. So take a minute. You might not have made your Google site yet, but type your blog in for today. What did you share with your bio bed? Bring closure to yourself in this day. about you, your unique self. What are the big ticket things that you recall from this day? And I hope you're having a great day. Sorry, I forgot to turn you off. Make good choices.